This is all in the past. By 1948, the American public was well aware of the UFO phenomenon. In June of 1947, while flying over the mountains of Washington State, pilot Kenneth Arnold had seen unidentified craft skipping across the sky like saucers. In July of 1947, something crashed in a farmer's field near Roswell, New Mexico, and an official spokesman from the U.S. Army told reporters that it was a flying disc, before changing the story to say it was just a weather balloon. Nothing to see here, folks. And in January of 1948, Captain Thomas Mantell had been sent to intercept a UFO in the skies over Kentucky, and he was killed in that attempt. The official explanation from the Air Force was that Mantell was accidentally chasing the planet Venus. Despite the fact that Venus would barely have been visible at that time of day, at that time of year. And that brings us to Fargo on that autumn evening in 1948. Lieutenant George Gorman, a 25-year-old World War II veteran, was flying alongside some of his fellow National Guardsmen in F-51 Mustang single-engine fighter planes. The other pilots descended and landed at Hector Airport, but because it was a nice clear evening, Gorman decided to stay in the air a little longer to practice his night flying. Here are Gorman's own words about what happened next. I was cleared by the tower to land when I noticed what seemed to be the taillight of another plane about 1,000 yards away. I queried the tower and they told me the only other aircraft over the field was a Piper Cub. This little plane I could see plainly outlined below me. It was not the one I had noticed. I looked again and I could not see any outline of anything around the moving light. I decided to take a close-up look at it. It was about 8 inches in diameter, clear white, and completely round with a sort of fuzz at the edges. But as I approached, the light suddenly became steady and pulled into a sharp bend. I thought it was making a pass at the tower. I dived after it, but I couldn't catch up to the thing. It started gaining altitude and again made a left bank. I now put my F-51 into a sharp turn and tried to cut off the light in my turn. By then we were at 7,000 feet. Suddenly the thing made a sharp turn and we headed straight for each other. At this point, Gorman put his F-51 into a sharp dive and the light cleared the top of his canopy by only a few feet. Gorman banked around to pursue the light and again had to dive to avoid colliding with it. Then, the light climbed away from Gorman and disappeared, and Gorman landed his plane. Four other people observed the dogfight. The pilot of the Cub, Dr. Cannon, and his passenger, Mr. Nielsen, both observed a fast-moving light but were unable to describe the maneuvering in much detail. Two Civil Aviation Authority employees on the ground also reported seeing the light that Gorman described as it flew over the airport. In 1948, there was an Air Force project called Project Sign that was tasked with investigating UFO sightings, and members of Project Sign were immediately flown to Fargo. They interviewed Gorman, Cannon, Nielsen, and the two CAA employees. They also ran a Geiger counter over Gorman's F-51 and found elevated levels of radiation compared to similar planes that had been sitting on the runway for a few days. This wasn't the last dogfight the Air Force would have with this kind of UFO. On June 21, 1952, an F-47 fought with a similar light over a top-secret laboratory in Tennessee with similar results. Get over here, you! And on December 10th of the same year, an F-94 tangled with one over Washington State. Get away from me! The official explanation for all three encounters is that the pilots were unknowingly fighting earthly craft. Each encounter was at night when it's easy to become confused and disoriented. And the light described by each pilot resembles the light attached to weather balloons. That's right, move along. According to the Air Weather Service, a weather balloon had just been released in the area a few minutes before Gorman saw the small light in the sky. And the radiation on Gorman's plane was a natural consequence of being exposed to solar rays during high altitude flight, which is why the aircraft on the ground that hadn't flown in a while didn't give off similar levels of radiation. So, at least for this particular dogfight, we can say that the tired old explanation of weather balloon might actually be accurate. However, there have been more recent encounters between fighter planes and UFOs that may be much harder to explain, and we will return to those encounters in a later episode. Get the camera.